hi guys welcome to the next video of the stas2 framework in this video we will talk about the overview of its main components and how stas2 works we will also talk about what these components do in a brief and in subsequent videos we will discuss in detail about these components in last video we saw that the stas2 is an mvc framework and the good thing is that the stas2 provides the controller to us and the controller provided by stas2 is a filter so all the logic of controller actually resides in the filter of stas2 and this is one of the most important components of stas2 the filter's name is stas prepare and execute filter in the in the latest version of stas2 library earlier they were using filter dispatcher as controller in older version of stas2 but now it is deprecated in recent releases you will find the mention of the filter dispatcher filter as a controller in so many books or tutorials because they are following the older version of stas2 so don't worry we can just replace the name of the controller from filter dispatcher to stas prepare and execute filter everything else can remain the same and it will work fine to use it we actually need to declare this filter in the deployment descriptor web.xml file using the filter and filter mapping elements once we declare this in web.xml file then all the request to the application will be routed to this controller so from there onwards stas2 takes the control of http request now whenever a request comes in the first thing what it does it checks for one configuration file named stras.xml file it searches this file in the class path of the application so this file could be present in either the webinf classes folder or webinf lib folder and this configuration file is our second main component of stras2 all the configuration related to our application is kept in this file now one thing what the controller does is it reads the xml file while booting up and loads it in memory in some form of objects so that it can just check the objects in memory instead of reading the xml file every time it needs it so like this the configuration like this the execution of a controller will be faster in reading the configuration file now the question is what does the controller do after reading the file the controller tries to find an action class for the corresponding re request uri so our next important component is an action class this is the point where the controller hands the controller to our class when the controller finds a matching action class for a request uri in the stas.xml file it instantiates that action class and if it doesn't find a matching action class then it instantiates a default action class we'll see what is the default action class later now after that it populates the action class properties with the input request parameters now one thing we can note here is that the task of the controller is actually increasing and it will be overloaded because there are so many things to do so what stras developers did they divided the tasks into many sub components called interceptors the interceptor is one of the main component of stas2 and there are many interceptors available doing some specific tasks now one of the interceptors is parameters interceptor which populates the action properties with input request parameters now, after the action properties are populated they can be validated if they are empty or if, if they are in valid format or not and that is done using validators now validators is also one of the main components of stas2 now once this validation is done the controller invokes the execute method of our action class the method to be called is actually configurable we can configure the method name to be invoked in this stas.xml file now, in this method we invoke the business class methods and get the data and finally we return a string from this method that indicates to the controller which view should the control be forwarded to generally we use jsp for the views but we can use some other technologies also for the view for this we need to specify the result type 
dispatcher result type is used for res JSP result types. For other types, we need to specify the result type for our view in this struts.xml file. So result type is actually another main component of struts2. So now we discussed about the main components of struts2. Let's check uh, on, the over on an overview of how struts2 works. Now when a request comes in, the controller consults the configuration file to determine what action class to invoke based on the request URI. Then it runs each of the interceptors registered for that action. So one of the interceptors will populate the action properties with HTML input parameters. Then the action method is invoked which returns some string. Based on that string result is executed. A successful action method execution will forward to a different view than a failed one. The result renders the view to the browser. So this was the overview of Stars 2 components and how Stars 2 works. This is it for this video. I hope this was helpful. Thanks for watching.